Hey, hey everyone, Crowlopix here, and welcome to uh, Pan Cheng Knot tutorial. Um, this one is an actual tutorial, whereas the video I had before on this particular knot was just, you know, a video of me doing it essentially. But uh, there seems to be high demand for this tutorial, so here we go. What you're going to need to make this knot uh, is uh, some satin, well I recommend satin cording because it's, they slide along um, quite well and doesn't get caught on, each, on itself. So it's very good to practice with. And I would recommend for this knot to have about maybe two meters. Well, if you're doing one color, um, have two meters and then double it. Otherwise, if you're doing like I'm doing for demonstration purposes, I'm using two colors. Uh, so I've got one meter of each color here. What else you're going to need is um, some pins to pin down your loops with uh, just to keep everything in order and then you'll need a pin cushion type of board um, I've got this board here which has foam in it so I can reuse it multiple times and a nice nifty little tray here um, but you can use like a sponge or a foam block anything you can even use a piece of cardboard anything that will hold um, the pins in place for you so and that and that's it that's pretty much it um, so we'll go ahead and get started to begin with since I'm using two colors you'll want to just go ahead and knot it in the end if you're using two colors if you're using one color and you've got your two meters here you double it like so and then you'll just do a knot in the end just an overhand knot like that and that allows you to hang it or loop it or keychain it whatever you want to do in the end but I've got two so I'm just gonna do an overhand knot at the end of my two just like that just a little knot very simple uh, what I have also done was I have burn the ends so I've melted the ends of my cording just to make sure that it doesn't unravel and to also make it a bit easier to weave through you don't have to do this you or you can use nail polish instead of burning it or you can use uh, safety pins to help you weave through I use safety pins before you just clip them into the end and then use them to pull through your work uh, you can use a number of things, but for practice, do whatever is easy for you. So to get started, I would suggest um, this knot here is going to be the top of your panchang knot. Go ahead and take a pin and pin it in like the left, upper left hand area of your board. So mine's going to go right here. Okay, so to start off with, we'll start with one side of this at a time. Here we begin our weaving stage. So what you'll do is take a pin and anchor it close to the top knot here. Once you've got that done, you'll bring your wrapping down, your cord, bring it down. And what we're doing now is essentially forming a W. So we bring it back up and pin it down and pin bring it back up and pin and there you go form your W that's your first start so you basically you have formed four vertical lines with the yellow so one two three four now we're gonna move on to doing horizontal lines and in order to do that with the same cord the same yellow we need to create a corner so you bring, bring it around, make a loop, and see how it looks like a P here. You're going to go ahead and just stick a pin towards the bottom of that P. And there you go, you've made a corner to start weaving horizontally. Now for this first pass horizontally, we need to do actual weaving. 
So remember I numbered these verticals as one, two, three, and four. So you're gonna take, we're gonna go from right to left. You're gonna take your chord and you're gonna go under the fourth one, over the third one, under the second, and over the fourth. I need you to pin that because that's our turning point. And we're going to go from left to right now. And the easy part about this one is that we're going to go over and under the same vertical strips, the same vertical passes. So we went over, under, over, and under. And you just pull that through. And there you go. You've made your second horizontal pass. Pin that because we're going to turn and go back the other way. And again, we're going to go over and under the exact same way. So under, over, under, over. Pull that all the way through. And there you go. You've got your third pass. Pin this at the end because we're going to turn. And we're going to go left to right. Again, same overs and unders. So over, under, over, under. Pull it all the way through. And this time, instead of pinning here, we're done. So we don't need a turning point. I would just suggest pinning it at the end here. Just to keep it taut and yet out of the way. So we're done with the yellow. Now we're going to move on to the green. So here, because we need to go horizontal again first, or we need to go horizontal first, sorry, I'm going to make a bit of a turning point here, just an anchor, just to help it. And I kind of like to keep it in line with these as well, it gives me room to move. So the green, the horizontal pass is pretty easy the first pass so left to right you don't have to weave anything in it goes over all four vertical stripes pin it because we're about to turn get in there and then we're gonna go right to left now when we're going right to left we need to go under all of the vertical ones so we go under under, under, and under, like that, and then you just go ahead and pull it all the way through. Take care not to get it caught on any existing pins that you have. So there you go, that's your second pass with the green, and we're going to do a turning point here, so pin this just outside of the yellow one here and we're going to turn it so this is going to be the same as the top one we're going to go left to right and it's all on top of the vertical lines we're going to pin this so that it stays close to the board there we go so left to right all on top we need to turn and go right to left so we stick a pin in here for a turning point and again it's the same as the second pass that we did it needs to go under all of the vertical ones so under 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 sometimes you can just scooch it along and under See, so it's under the four vertical lines. Go ahead and pull that through. And this is what you have. So now we need to start doing the vertical weaving with the green. So just like here, we went from vertical to horizontal with the yellow and we needed to create a corner. We need to do the same here. So first, we'll pin this as the start of our turning point. 
then we'll come down here and create another turning point so we can go from bottom to top. So now we're going to start probably the trickiest part of the weaving. However, it is the last part of the weaving. So we're going to weave vertical lines with the green. And we're going to be working in this space here for the first line, first two lines, excuse me. So we're going to go under the first one. Uh, actually, I'm going to number these lines because it's, it, trust me, it's going to help you. So from top to bottom, we've got one, which is green, two, which is green, three, which is yellow, four, which is yellow, five, which is green, six, green, seven, yellow, eight, yellow. So that's how they get numbered there. So going from bottom to top, you're going to go under, under number eight, and then you're going to go over seven, six, and five. And then we're going to go, so over seven, six, and five, under number four, and then over three, two, and one. So that means you can just go ahead and pull it through and make sure you're not caught on any pins. So you can go ahead and pull it through and this is where you should be now. We need to turn and go back. So go ahead and put your pin in for your turning point. Now going back top to bottom, you need to go under number one. Sorry, I know my hand's gonna get in the way. But you need to go under number one under number two. Hope you can see that. So under number one, under number two, so the two greens, over number three, which is that first yellow, and then under number four, which is that second yellow. And go ahead and pull it through just to keep things straight. Next, we're going to go under number five, which is green. Under number six, which is green. And then over number seven, which is yellow. Get caught on everything. Over number seven, which was yellow. And then um, under number eight, which is yellow. And you pull that through. So that's where you should be now. We are going to do that again. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. But we need to do that one more time. So we need to create a turning point here. And see how this wrap around the yellow. The green wrap, wrap around the yellow. So now we're going to work in this area here. Same as the first time. <laughs> so going from bottom to top under, over, 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 and then under. You can see that. And then over, over, and over. Pull it all the way through. Feel free to kind of squidge these out of the way if you need to in case you need some space to work with but because it'll be pretty hard to misalign them so I wouldn't worry about it but now we need a turning point so pin this inside that yellow loop that's where our turning point is going to be and now we need to go from top to bottom so from top to bottom it was under let me move this out a little bit more so you can see better there we go hopefully <laughs> so that was under under and then over the third one under the fourth one And go ahead and pull that through. 
So you have under the first green, under the second green, over the third yellow, under the fourth yellow. To continue, we need to go under number five, green, under number six, green, over number seven, yellow, and then under number eight, yellow, and pull that through. So it should look like this. I would say any troubles with this part, please rewatch that and give it a try. Once you get it and you do it a few times, it's, it's locked in there. You've got it for good. <laughs> good news is from here on, we are done with the weaving. We just now need to tighten our knot into what you normally see. So to tighten our knot, what I like to do, remember I said that this knot is the top of our knot. So I like to have that um, orientated so that it's clear to me. So I just turn my, my working space here so that the knot is at the top. Now we're actually gonna take out some pins. Don't be nervous. So I'm gonna take out this one here, which was just keeping this one steady. And what I tend to do is take out the inside pins first. Now what I mean by inside pin is that if you see here, there's two loops here. So there's yellow on the outside and green on the inside. Take out the pin that's holding the inside loop. And the same goes here, yellow on the outside, green on the inside. Take out the one holding down the green. And here. Now here, you can see it's green on the outside and yellow on the inside. So you're gonna remove the one in the yellow. And the same for here. And here. Up here, I've got four pins here, one in the top knot. Leave that one, but remove the remaining three. So one here, here, and here. So to keep track of this particular panchang knot has three loops on each side. So to help keep track that you've got three loops going on each side on here, because this looks like a mess, right? What I do is I go ahead and count them. So you can see here, this long loop here is considered one. This is considered two. This one's considered three. So there you go, three green loops. That's one side. Now to move on, you've got one yellow loop here, one here, and one here. But you've also got one here. So you can take out that last one. You only need three. And make sure it's the last one that you take out. All right, so that's it. We can start to go ahead and tighten this. We're gonna tighten it very slowly at first just to give it the basic shape. And then we can start to refine the loops and everything. So, Take the knot out of the head. Go ahead and pull that a bit forward. And then I take the top loops on the other sides, give those a pull, and pin them back down. These two middle loops, you'll see that, because these were the corners that we made, you can take one pin out of each. You only need one pin. Take those out, give this a pull, and then I put the pins back in, just to keep everything in order. Same for the bottom two loops. Take those out, give them a bit of a pull, and pop them back down. And so for the tails, yeah, you definitely want to give those a pull as well. So yeah, it looks like a bit of a mess, but don't worry, it will 
will start to tighten up very soon. I'm trying to keep this in the frame. Okay. What I like to do is I like to work on one side or one color at a time. But as you can see here, you can even help bunch it up a little bit to get it in place. see it's starting to find form that basket weave shape here it's a little oblong but yes we will be fixing that so uh, like I sorry what like I was starting to say is I like to work on one side or one color at a time so I'll pull out all of the pins for the green and then we'll start to work you can start pulling them a little bit just pulling on the loops pulling on the tail and that'll start to firm things up in the middle no need to pull too hard at this point but there you can see it's really starting to form the shape now it should be a square like a basket weave square in the middle so just keep pulling see how I'm, I can pull on the top Pull on the first loop, pull on the second loop while holding the square in the bottom, pulling on the third loop, and just keep holding to the square, pull on the tail. And then we can take out the yellow pins and do the same thing. So pull on the head on the first loop, pull on the second loop, pull on the third loop, and then pull on the tail. Don't worry if it looks uneven or anything like that because we need to go and refine all of these loops here. But as you can see, you've got the very basic basket weave square here. So what I like to do, and then of course after you've mastered this, you can determine how big you want these um, accent loops and such but I will show you what how I normally do it I like to have this top knot flush to the knot so I like to pull it all the way through tightening this knot is all about following the strands so I want to pull this through and if you follow this you can see this is the end of the row of where it comes out so that's where you're gonna want to pull so if you pull that you'll see that it's pulling through the green and I'm only gonna work on the green first for now so now you've got a loop here and this should really be flush so now you've got some flack here the number one loop go ahead and pull on the top side of that and what that does is that closes that gap there and you can go ahead and pull that tight. And now we need to move on. We need to make this loop smaller now, right? So we've pulled from here. We now need to pull this down. So follow your loop around, follow it. And here you can see that it's woven in and it stops here. You only wanna to go to the edge of the row. So you'll start pulling that. I hope I'm explaining this well enough. As I like to do it, I like to have small loop, big loop, and small loop on each side. So I'll make this one kind of small, but I won't pull it all the way tight. Again, we need to close off this, so second loop, just go ahead and pull on the top of that. While holding this, you can see it's getting smaller and smaller. Pull that tight and you're back to where you were as far as the middle's concerned. So now we're on the second loop, we need to make this smaller. So we pulled on this, we need to follow this all the way around. And then this, this was that corner we made. It goes this way, so we need to pull from this in now. So go ahead and give that a pull. 
tighten it. And because I like those middle loops to be bigger, I'm going to leave it about that size. Now we need to get rid of the flack in here. So moving on to the third loop, we're going to pull the top. You can see that's taking up the slack there. And pull that tight. Now we're on the third loop and it's way too big. So we need to, we pulled here. We need to follow that around and follow that through the weaving. And you can see it weaves through here. So you're going to pull at the end of that. So you're just going to keep pulling. And keep pulling. And I will leave a little bit of slack there to match my top one. Now we need to get rid of this. So only thing that's left to pull is the tail. So we'll go ahead and give that a pull. And I would suggest when you're pulling these, pull slowly and evenly. And there you go. So that's actually one side that's been tightened. And now we're going to work on the yellow side. And yeah, it's still quite loose in the middle, but you still have your basic shape. So what I like to do is I like to keep my working, the loops that I'm working on, I like to keep them on the left side. So now that we've finished the green, I'm going to flip this so that we can work on the yellow now. The yellow is on the left side. So remember we had the top, we pulled it close to the knot, so we still have slack here for the yellow. We need to pull that through. So this is where it's connected to the knot, hope you can see that. Follow that through, follow that and it's woven through here, here's the end. Go ahead and pull that through. And for my preference, I like it kind of taut. Now we need to get rid of this. So first loop, give it a pull. And tighten. Now we need to make this first loop smaller. So we pulled here follow this through and as you can see here it gets woven to the end so that's where we're going to pull and about the same size as my small loop on the green side now we need to get rid of this this excess loop so onto the second loop on the yellow going to pull from the top side and pull it taut, not saving any loops on that side. So now we need to make the second loop smaller. We pulled from here, follow that all the way through, and as you can see here, it gets woven into here, and here is the end. So we need to pull on that. that size. Need to get rid of this excess. So on the third loop we need to pull on the top part of the string and pull it taut. So now we need to make this third loop smaller. We were pulling on the top side. Follow that through. Follow that through. And as you can see here it gets woven through. Start pulling from the end. Keep going till you make it small enough. Yeah, about that size maybe. Maybe. 
and now we need to get rid of this. So all that's left is the yellow tail. Go ahead and pull that. And you want to pull that firm. Okay, so now it's getting closer to a panjang knot, right? And you can actually stop here. It doesn't have to be, you know, tightly knit and tightly woven. It's really up to you and what your preference is. But I like mine kind of tightly woven. So what I normally do is I pull on all of one color. So I pull on all of the greens. And you can see like there's a bit more slack now. Like it's made these loops bigger. Now I pull on all of the yellows to tighten it up. And you just keep doing that until it, it tightens. And then you can pull on the tails as well. And you just keep working that until it gets as tight of a weave as you like to have. I think that looks pretty good. Now notice that my loops have gotten bigger, of course. So what you can do, what I would do if I was to use this piece, is to go back through and, you know, tighten it all over again. And it's good practice to do that so that you fully understand how these are being woven through so you can see where the string is going throughout the piece. So I'm gonna go ahead, just for your sake, to show you again how this should look how I think it should look <laughs> because I'm unhappy with the size of this loop and I'm unhappy with the size of this loop. I want them to be even, I want them to look nice. So I always like to keep my working loops on the left so I'm going to flip this over because I want to work on the green loops. So like I said, I think that this loop is too big. So what I tend to do first is I pull on the left, the top side of the loop. And then, to make it smaller, we need to follow it around, just like we had did the first time around. So I pulled on the top, follow it around, and you can see it gets woven through to here. So I'm going to pull on that, just to make it smaller. Yeah, I like the size of that. Now, to get rid of that excess, you need to pull on the second loop. So the top of that, give that a pull and tighten it. So now we need to make this one smaller, just as we did it before, pulled here, so we need to follow this through, and through the weaving you can see that it goes through to this end. Go ahead and give that a pull, and now we need to pick up the slack here. So on the third loop, pull on the top part to And again, we need to make this loop smaller. So we were pulling on the top, follow that around, and it gets woven through here. So you can see this is the end that needs to be pulled. Give that a tug, and I like about that size. So now we need to get rid of this slack. Only thing that's left is the tail. Go ahead and give that a pull, nice tight pull. And there you go, I've readjusted my knots. I'll need to do the same on the yellow side, so I will do that again just to kind of go through the steps with you again. Like to keep my working loops on the left side, so I flipped it, so I'm working on the yellow loops. And I give this a pull at the top, make sure it's tight. And now since I want to make that smaller, I've pulled on the top part of this loop. I need to follow that around. And I can see here that it gets woven through and continues here. So we're gonna give that end a pull. And make this smaller. Yep, that looks about good because I want this side to match this side. Now we need to pick up that little bit of slack we've made here. Second loop, we're gonna pull the top part and pull tight. 
Now this needs to be made smaller, so pull from here, follow that around, and you can see here it gets woven through across, ending here. So that's where you're going to pull to make this loop smaller. good so now to get rid of that slack go to the third loop and pull on the top part and pull it tight now it's too big so pulled on the top part follow that around and as you can see here it gets woven through to this bottom row stops here so go ahead and give that a pull Now we need to get rid of that slack and the only thing that's left is the tail so we'll pull on the tail and pull that tight and that's it that's the panching knot that is complete so i do hope that this was um, a tutorial that you could follow along with i know it may not be it may not seem so simple the first time around, but trust me, try it a couple of times, play the video in slow motion, repeat, just so you know, especially with the weaving part, so you know the over and unders. And then from then on, it's just playing with the tightening of it. Give that a play. Trust me, once you do this once or twice, you'll be a pro at it, okay? I really do hope that you enjoyed and I hope that this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.